Okay, we're revisiting the meter in Peter because there might be, I may have to seriously revise the way the meter works. Uh, I'm, in front of you is Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. See right here, the Ephesians 1 we parse stock. And I'm going to read, the meet, there is a meter pattern in Cadence without Peter that maybe Peter is continuing. If so, it's going to be different from what I've said before. Now, with any kind of text, you can have several different kinds of meter depending on how the text is written. Um, but it's a general standard, especially for Greek meter, that the music or the song that gets written is going by the text itself. Now maybe Peter changes the different stanzas to different meters because that's done in Greek uh, also. But, well, let me just launch into it and then you decide what you think. I'm going to start reading here in Paul. And then beginning here, I'm going to intersperse Peter. But I'm not going to show Peter on screen, okay? Uh, pardon my heavily American accented Greek, okay? Eulogetas hoteos kai pater, tu curiu hemon yes Christu, hulogeses hemas, en pasu logia numatike, en tois epuranios en Christoi, catos excelexeto hemas, en autoi procadabolis cosmu. And now we're going to insert Peter from 1 Peter 1 3. You logetas hoteos kai pater, tu curiu hemon Jesu Christu. Now that will take you all the way to 86. The reason why I'm inserting it here at 66 is that that's where Peter's verse 1 3 starts. And he's quoting Paul in Paul's 1-3. They didn't use verses like we do. They use syllables. But he's picking up, he's like sticking in a refrain of Paul's first line here. First two lines. I could argue he's sticking in these two lines again as a refrain here. And so it kind of ties because you can cut this off as a clause all by itself. You wouldn't have to read this next in Paul's meter. But you could also take this and close the sentence here. See, even as he elected us in him before the founded founding of the world. You could do it either way. That's one of the neat things about Greek. Okay? So you could say katos elexic el ex I'm sorry. Katos exelexito gemas. You just leave it there and start a whole new stanza here, which is what I did in the Pauline verse, because that's kind of what he's trying to do. All right, because he's matching ends and the ene is part of it, but see, an and ice, these are all separate clauses. But I could also easily say, Katos exelexito gemas. And now toe procatabolis cosmo. You see how that works? And then Peter could come in and repeat the first two lines of Paul, which he does in Peter 1 3 when Peter says, Ulogetas hoteos kai pater, tu curiu hemon Jesu Christu. You see, he's doing the same thing. Now, if you do that, this still makes sense as the next line. Except I think that they're changing the meter here. Inehemas hagius momus. It's not really that much of a change. You're still keeping the same beat. Inehemas hagius kaya momus. See, because this would be marching. Okay, so this is almost like double time marching. Inehemas hagius kaya momus. Katenopion autu. Katenopion autu. Wait a minute. Katenopion autu en You see? 
because this is that enjambment. This is a, a classical Greek technique called enjambment. The scholars who translated it knew that. That's why they append this to verse 4 in translation. And so if you're going to read the enjambment, because it's basically applying in two directions. It applies backwards like that, and then it also applies forward like this. That's the purpose of it. Okay? See, look. Enjambment. All right? And I got that from... Um, hold on. had to get the book. I got that from uh, Oxford Grammar of Classical Greek by James Morwood. Okay, it's a term in the glossary of the book. So that's why you could probably read the meter like that. So let's go through that a little bit again. Starting here. Ulogetas hoteos kaipater, tu curiu heimon Jesu Christu. Ulogetas heimas en pasu logia numatike. I'm not reading that right. Ulogetas heimas en pasu logia numatike. Probably closer. En tois epuranios en Christoi. Katos excelexeto heimas. And now toi procata bolis calls more. And then we go back to Peter. Ulogeta sorteos kaipater. Tu curiu heimon Jesu Christu. Okay, now that takes you to 86 in Peter. So then if we're inserting it here, you then read the next Pauline text. Ine heimas, ine heimas hagius kaiamomus. Catenopio now to and agape. All right? And that would take you to syllable, actually, this comes out to be 87, uh, 84, and agape, uh, 88. Oops. Back. Takes you to 88, so, and aga. Yeah, maybe there. Although it really should be en aga. And I don't think that they would have done that. I think they would have just said the whole phrase. Because the, the intention is the same. All right? So we either do it that way or you read it all the way down to here in Paul. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep clicking on the wrong thing. You read it all the way down here to Paul. In other words, read this whole Pauline text as one unit all the way down to an agape. And then insert Peter to overlap it. So let's try doing that. Ulogetas hoteos kaipater. Tukuriu hemon Jesu Christu. Ulogesas hemas and paslogia pneumatike and tois epuranios in Christoi. Katos exalexato gemas. En autoi procatabolis cosmu. In gemas, in gemas, in gemas, I use kaiamomus. I'm, I'm not stating the, the cadence right. In gemas, hagios kaiamomus. Catenopio now to en agape. And then when you go to read Paul the next line, you repeat en agape. En agape pro risas he mas. All right? But you probably just stop at en agape right here and then go back to Peter. All right? And you read ulogeta soteos kaipater as a sort of like second repeating stanza. Ulogeta soteos kaipater. Tu curiu hemon Jesu Christu. All right? So that it ends up being a bookend because you got the same text here at the beginning. And then after an agape, you'd be stating this same text at the end to sort of close it off like a bookend. 
That's very frequent in, in Greek literature. Okay, or frequent enough. And then, before citing um, 1 Peter 3b, which takes you all the way to syllable 103, you start back here in Paul and go and, and repeat the text. And agape pro risas hemas is we are to see in the Jesu Christu. And that would take you to 105 because there's some overlap. And then you do Peter's clause, which in 3b reads as follows. Hokata tu polautu. I'm not getting the meter right. Hokata tu polautu. Hokata, here we go. Hokata pola. Hokata to pulautu. Okay. Eleos anagenesas he mas. Let me repeat that. We'll start again back here in Paul. En agape pro risas he mas. Es huiotesien di Jesu Christu. And then now with Peter, 1 Peter 1 3b. Hokata po tu polu autu. Eleos anagenesas he mas. Okay? so that you're interleaving the text earlier than I've been saying in my videos. But if we do that, you'll notice that the change is different here in the meter, because this is where I started in my prior videos. I, I did in the prior videos, it was, I swear to see an, di yes Christu. And that's a good marching rhythm also. Okay. Both of them are following sort of like the Greek tradition of how you do a marching rhythm, and they had several different kinds. All right, so it's a question of do you change the mar marching rhythm here, or do you keep it the same as what it's been? Now, what's arguing in favor of changing the marching rhythm here to what I've done already in the videos is the fact that this is really repetitive. Of course, it's a marching rhythm, so it should be. Okay, I mean, because it's always the same. You log it as oteos kaipater to cool you, hey, mon, yes, a Christu. Hologes as a mass and pass the hula gian the watike. And I'm still saying this wrong. Hologes as a mass and pass the hula gian the matike and pass the hula gian the matike. I'd have to say it faster. And toi se puranios and Christoi. Now maybe they varied the rhythm in this because there's so many extra syllables, but I haven't figured out the counter rhythm. There should be a counter rhythm. Okay, they didn't do just one rhythm. They'd have one rhythm for your main rhythm, then they'd have an alternate rhythm. Okay, and I'm I'm suspecting that this is an alternate rhythm, but I haven't figured it out yet. Okay, and then we revert to the refrain, the main rhythm. And toi se puranios en Christoi. And then you say it again, because this is a closing paragraph. Katos exelexeto gemas. En toi procatabolis cosmo. Ine gemas hagiu. Ine gemas hagius kaamomos. Katenopion atu en agape. You see how that's working? Do it again. So, I, I don't know how much you're working on this. I know some people are, hence this video. But you could argue that, well, okay, here we got to change the rhythm because we're sort of um, getting into, the, into more detail. But my, then the argument should be, well, why don't we just change it here? Because this closes, I mean, especially because you're using an agape, this will close it, and then using enjambment, you'd start it up again for your next stanza. I mean, stanza isn't the word that the Greeks used. It's what we use for a group of, of texts that's sort of standing alone in a rhythm. But I would be changing the, the rhythm here, but I don't know how to change it here. I mean, because it's a suio tesian di Jesu Christu, and what I've done before. So... How do we say it here? And now, rapi pro risa se mas. It doesn't work. I mean, it doesn't sound like it works. Okay. 
I mean, there should be a hey here. And hey, agape, plural, risas y más. That would make it better. But it's an arthritis, so what are we doing with this? I mean, do you just slow down? En agape, plural, risas y más. Es cuyo te sien, di Jesu Cristo. You see? I could do it, but it's sort of artificial. And that, you know, Greek meter sometimes does do that. Because it's marching. All right, and they'd be using some kind of classical Greek marching cadence to unite the two. You know, prophecy of the Gentiles fulfilled. So they'd be uniting Greek meter and the, the classical Hebrew meter that, you know, Peter and Paul are following. I would think they'd be doing that in a marching song. That would make sense because it's cute. All right, so that's where I'm at with it now. I'm sort of back to the drawing board. Because it's like, well, if I'm talking about Peter creating an interleaved song and his first line of the song proper quotes Paul here, all right, then why shouldn't the song start here in Paul? And then Peter interleaves in a different way than what I've said. See, because when I started it earlier, I started this in Paul as the beginning of the song. I'm not so sure that's correct now. So if you got any ideas, let me know. You got any meters or cadence or something that you think works better for the whole, you know, 12 verses in Peter compared to the verses here in Paul? Let me know. But very clearly, he's doing something like this. Okay, signing off.